Hello, I'm Bob Unger. In this video, I'm going to make a set of attractive inlay coasters using two basic tools, a scroll saw and a power sander. I was asked by a friend if I could make several copies of a design he had of a coaster that he wanted to give his family for Christmas. I said I'd see if I could and then I'd get back to him. But to my surprise, it came out rather good. So I'd like to share this method with you. Uh, you can download the instructions that are in the video for the comments. And what you're going to need are four pieces of contrasting wood, four inches square, about an eighth of an inch thick, and also some good quality plywood about from one quarter to one half inch thick. You'll also need some double sided tape. Uh, that's it for now, so next time I see you we'll be in the workshop. I've got four different species of woods which I'm going to use to make our coasters with. I'm going to stack them together holding them with uh, some double sided tape which I have here. Okay, I have the four pieces. I have the mahogany, walnut, cherry, and maple. They're all stacked together and I'm going to let them be clamped together for five minutes to strengthen the bond. And it'll be really strong for when we have to cut it. So I'm going to leave it for about five minutes. Okay, so we've waited five minutes to let this strengthen the bond and the, with the double sided tape and now I'm going to put some painter's tape across here and this helps lubricate the blade and also makes it much easier to lift the pattern off afterwards. Okay, and then I'll meet you over at the scroll saw. As you can see, I've marked the numbers from 1 to 24. This is really important to keep track of each uh, stack of pieces that you'll need later on when you're going to assemble the, the uh, coaster in the right pattern. Okay, so we're going to start cutting. I've got a number 3 blade. I'm going to tension it up here and ready to go. First I'm going to cut out the circle. And you can stay close to the line, you don't have to be exact because later on you'll be taking it to the disc sander where you're going to trim it. So I'm just staying about a couple of millimeters close to the line. Okay, so I've cut out the perimeter 
I'm going to take it to the sander. Right, so here we are back at the scroll saw. Now, now that we've got the perimeter cut out, we can just sim simply go in through the edges. And then I put them in this tray here to keep them together, separated. The triangular pieces, one, three, that are the same species, I'm going to keep together the diamond shape next to it in the groups of three, one, two, and three. doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Obviously you want it as straight as you can, but imperfections won't be noticed as much as you think. So that's the, the idea here. I'll do a couple, three more and then I'll show you the whole thing when it's complete. Now we're coming to the end. So even if they're not perfect, because they're all cut together at the same time, you'll be amazed at how little you see of the imperfections, which is one of the great things about this method. So we're done. These are all the pieces cut out. And now we're going to take them and remove the tape and the patterns. And then we're going to number the backs with the same numbers. So it's really important that you do that. And I'll show you later that you want to keep it oriented the same way. So when we take it all apart, we're going to put the same number on the back of each of these, this group here. So you'll keep them together. So I'll, we'll see you later. Okay, so at this point, what I've done is I've started to take apart the stacks. 
I have removed the double sided tape and the uh, painter's tape on the top. I have numbered each of these according to the stack. This is really important. You don't want to get these mixed up because they are going to fit perfectly later on. So I put them back where they were. These are number three. Try and keep them together. And then number two here, and so on. And then I'm going to continue on doing that. Now we're starting the fun part of gluing our uh, coaster together, but we need to organize the pieces. I have a chart here, and by the way, all of this is included in the plans that I, I've put in my comments, so you're, it's available for you if you want. I have the numbers of the pieces, the species, and then the order in which they go around. There is approximately what the pattern is going to look like. So what you're doing is you're gathering up your pieces, you're checking out to see if there's anything that needs to be sanded, a little bit of fuzzies here and there, the correct number, and then you're going to dry fit it around so that it'll be ready when you need to glue it. And what we're gluing it to is this here, is a half inch plywood, and you notice that I've quartered it off in, in quadrants so that it's going to be easy to place them around because uh, as you'll see later on it's a really kind of important to get it done within a certain amount of time to adjust for the pieces as they move around so there I am going um, I've just started collecting my pieces for the first one and one two and three in the next I would get four uh, for instance um, number five maple which is over here and you'd find that there and you'd put that in its place and everything of course fits really well because it was all cut together that's the beauty of this method okay and I'll get back when I've done that and you'll see what it's going to look like now I've taken all the pieces I've dry fit them together and you can see what it's kind of going to look like. And then I'm going to put some glue and work in quadrants here. And that's why it's really important to have this thing sectioned off. So I'll, I would start putting glue, and the glue that I'm going to use is Weld Bond, which sets pretty fast. So just enough time to manipulate things around, as you'll see, uh, to get them as tightly fitting as possible. So. That's the next step. Now we're ready to to glue down the pieces. And so while while you're checking them as you're dry fitting them, make sure that all the tape on the underneath is taken off because that's important because the bot the top doesn't matter. You can we're gonna sand everything anyways later. So now I'm gonna put some glue. and then spread it out nice and evenly. Try not to get it on your fingers because it could be harder to manipulate the pieces. I'm putting on a nice amount because the pieces want to slide around as it's setting. Ideally you should have like a wet rag available, but we'll do it this way. Okay, and then you start from, basically you can start from anywhere, but you start from here. Use your lines to, to guide.
So, just coming to the end of this part. Okay, so now what we want to do is gently squeeze all around so that things sort of lock together. More important that the middle fits tighter. If there's a little bit of roughness around the edges, it's going to be smoothed out with the sander. It's still flexible. That's about as that's about where it should be. Okay, so around here is going to be all sanded. You see that there is some edges. Because of the kerf of the blade, you're actually losing a little bit of wood. So if I had have done an edge glue uh, with some crazy glue, you would have had a gap. So this is uh, the best way of compromising and making up for some of the wood that's lost through the saw blade. So that's it for now. And then I'm going to just take a piece of wax paper put another piece of wood and clamp it for about half an hour and then it's ready for some sanding. After using the pieces up for the first coaster, you will change the numbers on your pattern at the place you first started. In other words, for the second coaster, pieces 1, 2, 3 become 4, 5, 6. Then fill in the rest of the numbers. For the third coaster, start at 7, 8, 9, etc.
Okay, so now I'm going to take the edges and smooth them out a little bit on the sanding mop. This is a 120 grit. Final sanding, I'm going to sand 220 and also the face of it that will really polish it up nicely, ready for spring. Now you can see even now without the finish, it's nice and shiny, smooth, and the next stages will be just to put a couple of coats of shellac and polyurethane. Okay, there's coat of shellac and let that dry and then come back in the morning put another coat and then some poly rub and that'll do it so we now have four finished coasters they're uh, shellac and I put poly rub on them and I think they look pretty good put some cork on the back and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and do your own versions of them and thanks a lot for watching